Thank you both very much for that introduction. And thank you, President Klein, for uh, revealing our eviction story. Um, you know you're getting older when um, anyone you went to college with can be referred to unironically as president of anything. So uh, unless it's the Apple Bong Society, which Jay was not, was not president of. Congratulations to all of you, the uh, Watkins class of 2018. It's quite an impressive, impressive achievement. And congratulations to all your family and friends who have supported you to this moment. Um, now what to talk about. Uh, I could tell you various stories about the animals I've worked with. Um, I've worked with two different goats, a raccoon, a baby raccoons, a bobcat, a javelina, and a huge jackass named Drew Carey. Um, I guarantee Drew would have laughed at that joke. Uh, I have been a member of two graduating classes myself, and I have to be honest, I don't remember a single thing any of the speakers said. So it's a little awkward as I begin these remarks. Um, but if you do remember only one thing from what I say, please let it be this. You are all crazy brave. And I am humbled to speak to you today. It is a crazy, brave thing to say to your family, to your friends, to your parents, to your city, your state, your country, your world, yourselves, that you're going to live the life of an artist and that you're going to want, demand, that your family and friends and community come and spend their time and money to see and hear what you create. Somewhere inside you, there's a voice that tells you, it nags at you, sometimes screams at you, that you have something to say, and that what you have to say is beautiful and moving and important. Important enough for us to take it into ourselves and perhaps let it change our lives. That voice that calls to you has been around a long time. The Greeks called them the muses, but the desire to create was around long before the Greeks. We have made art forever. We have told stories forever, from cave paintings to comic books, from campfires to YouTube. So you are in a long line of the crazy brave. A voice has called to me, and I have chased it for 40 years through storytelling in, in theater, film, and television. I have heard it most clearly when I take part in the story, when I create from where the character stands, from the shoes up. I am a player in the Shakespearean sense. And uh, William Shakespeare had some excellent advice for players. The purpose of playing, both at the first and now, was and is to hold as it were the mirror up to nature, to show virtue her own image, and scorn her own feature, and the very age and body of the time is form and pressure. This idea of holding a mirror up to nature has been the guiding principle of my career. So an artist who worked 347 years before I was born changed my life forever. That is the power of art. I've learned a lot from acting. Uh, I call them acting lessons. No, not acting lessons, but acting lessons. For example, when you find yourself in a demented clown costume in August in the swamps of Louisiana, be sure to wear a neoprene suit with ice packs underneath. Now that is undeniable advice. It will literally save your life. Here's another. When your day involves being hanged by a mob and acting in a three-page scene, be hanged by the mob first. That's counterintuitive, I know, but if you're hanged first and act after, you have a chance to go home happy. But if you act first and you're hanged after, you're guaranteed to go home bum. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, when is this ever going to come up in my life? Well, I never thought it would come up for me either. So, you're welcome. See, you never know where this life is going to take you. 
every year ahead, every day ahead, is a clean slate. That's part of the crazy bravery of it. Like many other project-oriented freelance professions, lawyers, contractors, real estate agents, you simply have to take the risk and see what happens. That part's just a little bit for your parents, just for a second. But there are other lessons, deeper lessons. When you booked a job as an actor, one of the first joyous calls you get is from the costume department asking for your measurements, you know, your sizes. Don't lie to the costumer about your sizes. You show up at the fitting and nothing fits and it's just embarrassing and awful. I am a size 22 dress, by the way, and I'm told I have uh, fine hips for birthing. So tell the truth. That's a pretty simple, pretty simple lesson, right? But to tell the truth, you have to know the truth about yourself, about who you are and what fits you. Be honest with yourself first. Self-doubt and self-hatred plague us all, but we cannot allow that to silence us. Telling the customer the truth about your sizes means that you accept yourself as you are, at least for that moment. And if you keep doing it, maybe that moment will grow into a few seconds, maybe even a minute. Who knows? It could be even longer. Accept yourself as you are. Love yourself as you are. Because you are worthy of love as you are. You the crazy, brave you that came to Watkins. The crazy, brave you that listened to that voice inside of you and decided to tell others what it was saying to you, that I'm a filmmaker, that I'm a sculptor, that I'm a painter, a graphic artist. Love that you that is brave enough to speak out, that is crazy enough to try and fail and try and fail and try and fail and try. Beauty, and that you, that you that you have to love, does not come in just one package. Beauty and talent do not come that way. Nowhere in the amusement park of, of the artistic life is there a sign that says you must be this tall to ride these rides, or this weight, or this gender, or this skin color, or this hair color. Even hair is not a prerequisite. That's why I took off the hat. We have been making art since charcoal first hit the walls of caves, but your art has yet to be made. Your voice has yet to be heard, and we are desperate for it. This tired world is in need of renewal, and we need you to do it. We don't hear that voice inside of you. Only you do, and it is unique. No one can mistake an Alice Neal for an Alice Andy Warhol or a, Judy Den or a performance by Judy Dench for one by Viola Davis or a song by Jack White for one by Jack Black. Art does not conceal. It reveals. And the more you reveal of yourself, the bigger your success will be. And what is success for an artist? Is it dollars? Is it fame? Those are false gods. Success in art, in my opinion, is only defined by two questions. Is it true to you? And does it move others? Does your work look, sound, and feel the way you imagined it would? That's one question. Does it have the impact you imagined? Not in terms of notoriety, but in terms of what you wanted people to feel. That's the other. The tension comes from balancing these two competing needs, and that tension is relentless. My brother-in-law, Phil Palisol, is a comedian. He's, he and my sister Nora have uh, been working in the art of comedy for 30 years, and before following that nagging voice inside him that told him he was a comic, he worked cutting countertops at a place called Modern Plastics. And he told me once, 
that while the work at Modern Plastics was grueling and mind-numbing, he was out on the golf course by 3.30 and he didn't think once about work again when he was outside that factory. But since becoming a comic, he never stops working every moment of his life. His grist for the mill of his work, every second is spent on it. As a side note, Modern Plastics is out of business and Phil is still a comedian. Work for artists, even, the most, even in the most successful careers, is rare. Don't waste a single opportunity for work. In my experience, it is the days not working on your craft that makes the life of an artist so difficult. The days spent waiting tables and driving lift and temping all the, the self-promotion, the presentations, submitting your portfolio, your script, your short film, and getting a no in response or more likely no response at all. Those are the days that will sow doubt and sap confidence in your voice. You will need all the support you can get. So, selfishly, support your fellow artists. Especially support the members of this class, regardless of their discipline. They are your cohort in this journey. Go to their openings, hold a light for their short films, introduce them to gallery owners, be a Watkins Mafia. Because if we don't support each other, can we expect others to? Can we demand the proper support from our institutions if we don't support each other? My last acting lesson for the day comes from Lee J. Cobb, the first actor to play Willie Loman in Death of a Salesman. He was talking to a young actor and he said, prepare, work on your craft every day, and when your chance comes, be excellent. And Mr. Cobb is right. Excellence must be our North Star. We must be undeniably excellent. I add only this. Focus that pursuit of excellence not just on your craft, but on your life. Your life's work is not your art. Your life's work is your life. Make your life a masterpiece. Create it now, starting in this moment. Do everything you do with zeal and curiosity. Expand your life. Exercise, meditate, learn a language, take up woodworking, have relationships and children. Love your family, friends, and pets. Tend to the young and care for the dying. Engage in your life with passion, compassion, empathy, and care. Learn about the world. Read, listen, watch, travel, volunteer, get involved in politics, vote. For God's sake, vote. Make your life your greatest work of art. It will add power and resonance to your work. It will, yes. But more importantly, it will deepen your happiness and the happiness of your loved ones. And I believe it will help heal our world. You are all crazy brave for signing up to, for this life that is relentless and aggravating and wondrous and beautiful and worth it. Thank you very much. Once again, congratulations. <laughs>